fallen angel. And it's important to think of why we're studying this in the first place. We don't want to study this just to get knowledge or just to take up time. We want to study this because we want to know the truth. And the big reason, which we talked about last week, is the skeletons in God's closet. So uh, we talked about sometimes pastors and sometimes priests. They look like an awesome person, but looking back in their history, looking at some of the things you did, they've done, you, you see some of the garbage that they've been trailing the whole time. And some people attribute Satan as part of God's garbage, as part of God's skeleton in his closet. And a lot of people don't want to believe in God just because of that. Because how could you how could you create an evil person to do evil things like he does? Uh, so what we're going to tackle is, was he indeed created evil by God? Or is he a fallen angel? And is he a fallen angel... Because he chose that, or did, or did God make him that way? You know, so it's a big because that it's an attack on God's character. Is he really good? Is he really just? Um, so that's the purpose, and we want. So the hope is for you to know how to defend what you believe, Steve. To for you to defend when you're out at your job, chatting with people, for all of us to defend what we, we believe and to know it. So today is the fallen angel. All right, so let's do a little recap of last week. Anybody know who the devil is? If you can give me a definition or who Satan is. Any definition, even your own, anything. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a deceiver. All right, devil is a deceiver. Okay. Deceiver. I'm going to read you a definition that we went over last week. Uh, the one who opposes the person and purposes of God. Satan is especially associated with deceit, temptation, and testing through which he attempts to defeat believers from obeying God. Alright, so who is Satan? He's the one who is totally against everything to do with God. And he's totally for tearing you down. He's trying to break that relationship with you and God. That's his whole goal, is against. All right, He's our accuser. He's our enemy. He's the enemy of God. He's the deceiver. So for you as a Christian, I think it's important for you to know who your enemy is. And like last week we talked about, this is a spiritual thing. It's not. He's not a person. He's not a flesh and bone person. Like when we get in fights with people, we're not. you're not necessarily fighting that person. There's... There's spiritual stuff going on, and that's where your battle is. Um, so, Satan, and we're going to learn a little bit about him today. All right. So, the first point we want to go to is, when did the devil begin to exist? The very beginning. When do you guys think he started existing? Anybody want to take a crack at it? After the God made him. Alright, after God made him. And when was this? In the beginning. And when is the beginning? In the beginning. Of? Life. Whose life? Our life. <laughs> so you're telling me that when, when, the, when God gave breath to man, at that time the devil was created. No, I'm just asking. You, That's when he came out. Okay. I think he was created before that. You think he was created before that? It was uh, when Earth was just dark. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we know that there's two beginnings, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God. Okay, so that was like way, sometime. I mean, God is, God is infinite, so He doesn't have a beginning. Mm -hmm. But there was a beginning before the Earth's beginning. Um, doesn't there? It wasn't really a beginning, though. So he's always been. So when was the devil created? And that's what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, is he eternally existent like God? All right. Has he always? Has he just always been? No. Any proof? <laughs> yeah. Irene, do you have an opinion on that one? I'm going to throw some more questions at you before we get into the verses. Um, 
Dualism. Anybody know what dualism is? Ever heard of it? Uh, dualism is when you have two. Oh, I got the definition. The division of something conceptually into two opposed or contrasted aspects. So two equal opponents, God and Satan. Dualism. They are eternally existent. That's the belief of dualism: evil and good, eternally existent. Both equal forces against each other. But that's not what the Bible teaches. It's a it's a view, but it's not what the Bible teaches. So if you're gonna if we believe that the the Satan is eternally existent, you're actually going for dualism, an eternally opposing force, an eternally good force, God and Satan, which the Bible doesn't te teach. Yin and Yang. I don't know if anybody's heard of Yin and Yang. Have you seen that black thing with that? You know, there's a line going through it, white and black. Yeah, that's that's kind of evil and good, eternally fighting against each other. That's not the case. God's much greater. Alright, angels. Did angels exist before Adam and Eve creation? Uh, can we say, uh, how many say yes? We got three. How many say no? One. Oh, you know, nobody. Okay, cool. Alright, let's read a couple verses. Uh, so like I said, we're doing a debate for people who just walked in. We're doing a debate in two weeks. And uh, we're going to ask everybody to participate. And we're going to be fighting against each other. Um, was the devil... A fallen angel, or was God was he created by God already evil? Um, and today we're going over fallen angel. I want you guys to read Job 38, 4 to 7. You can open up your Bibles. And again, I suggest take some notes because you're going to need this when you're fighting against your opponents. Job 38, verses 4 to 7. This is pretty cool. We're talking about when did he begin to exist? When did the devil begin to exist? And this, this is just a series of verses leading us there. 4 to 7, and it says, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? God's talking to Job. Tell me if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? Who, what supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone? As the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Alright, so what is that verse telling us? If we're thinking about when did Satan exist, it doesn't actually mention Satan, but it does mention angels. What do we know about uh, the existence of at least angels? When did they begin to exist? Just from this verse. Read it again. Uh, what? What supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? What were you going to say? That they existed. They were present when? Creation. They could either be when he created them, they were singing for joy, or before that, they were already singing. Right, okay. Okay, so that you could, you could debate that. You have to look a little closer. Um, what I'm thinking it's saying is that God's telling, God's hammering Job, like, hey, look, you don't know nothing. Were you there when I created the world? Were you there when I did all these things? When I did this and the angels were shouting for joy when I created, he's talking about when he created the world. So it sounds like angels were already existing when God was creating the earth. That's what it sounds like. And all the angels shouted for joy when he was doing all this creating. So... That's given us a little insight, at least, about angels. Uh, why were angels created? That's, uh, let's look at that, if, you know, some, maybe for some of the purposes, and to show that they were actually created and not eternal like God. Psalms 91, 11. Uh, let's just jump over there. I'm just gonna, I get a lot of verses. I'm, I'm going to try not to read all of these. There's a ton. But... Um, we need all the help we can get. 91.11 For He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. Alright, so this is just talking about the purpose of angels. Why do they even exist? Alright, why do they exist? Their, uh, angels means messenger or angel, messenger or agent of God. So, why did He create angels in the first place? They're Oop. Warriors. Warriors, yeah. yeah. Angel means messenger or agent. So uh, we know that when, when you look at like Isaiah in the, in the 
in in the throne room, he gets like insight into there. He says there's angels mm-hmm. around and there's cherubim with their wings, six wings covering their face and their feet. Um, but this is pretty cool. It says uh, in verse 11, He will order His angels to protect you wherever you go. Um, from spiritual, the spiritual realm. Yeah. yeah Every, maybe everything. Around us. Yeah. So angels protect us wherever we go. So some of you who could have died in car accidents. David, you ever been in something crazy? Could have died situation? Never. It's coming. I hope not. <laughs> Yeah, but angels protect you. I, I've almost died a couple times. And, man, I should have been dead. I should be dead. I, my goodness. And ju- just think it. What if, what if maybe the angel just tapped me a couple inches out of the way. Oh, move over a little and save my life. Um, so it's pretty cool that angels are there to protect us. Uh, let me read one more. Uh, Psalms 148, verse 2 and verse 5. Psalms 148, verse 2 and verse 5. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all the armies of heaven. Verse 5. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For He has issued His command and they came into being. Alright, so talking about the angels, they're created. Alright, so they're not eternal existent like God. They were created for a purpose. The purpose was to serve God to be His messengers, be His agents, but at the same time, protect us. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how and why. Um, I'm going to read you one more just because it's kind of cool topic. We'll probably never touch it again. Nehemiah's, Nehemiah 9.6. Uh, Nehemiah, I don't remember where it is, but it's somewhere in the Bible if you're looking. Nehemiah 9.6. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. All right. So God created everything, the hosts of heaven, er- everything he created. All right. So that's just the per- first part. Where did Satan, when did he begin to exist? If he's a fallen angel... He was created along with the angels, which it sounds like either right before the creation of the world, or sometime before the creation of the world, or or during those seven days, uh, because of that verse when he was creating the angels were singing. Wow, you know that's what that's what they were doing. All right, so from that from those verses, it sounds like the devil was created. Angels were created when before the, the earth or right during that time. And, and that again, that's a debated topic. You can study that a little deeper. Um, when was the devil's first appearance in the Bible? In the history of humankind, when was his first appearance? Serpent. The serpent. Are you sure the serpent was Satan? Yeah. Positive. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's see and we know where it is. Genesis chapter 3. Let's take a looky. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And if somebody would like to read it, that would be helpful. Elmer, are you ready? Go ahead. Um, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. That's good right there, man. Thank you. All right, so they're talking about a serpent. That was created by God. That was created by God. Ooh. All right. So how do we know that serpent is Satan? He's the most craftiest. Does it say Satan or devil anywhere? Nope. You have to. How do we know? All right, let's jump over to Revelations. I'm going to show you why. Revelations, uh, where is it? 20, verse 2. Revelations 20, verse 2. Way in the back. I should have probably printed these out. And it says, He sees the dragon, that old serpent, who is the devil. Satan and bound him in chains for a thousand years. Yes, 
Even though it doesn't say Satan, devil. You know, in the Old Testament, it doesn't say it a lot. You know what Satan means in the Old Testament? Accuser. And they actually use it for other people other than Satan. Just agents of destruction, accusers. That's just the word they used. Not until the New Testament do we get more specific into who is the devil. Uh, actually, I wasn't going to talk about it, but actually during the time of silence. Do you guys know when that was, the era of silence? No, no. It was, it was. There was like four hundred. There was a four hundred year gap between the Old Testament uh, prophets and Jesus. And in that time period, there was a lot of development on Satan and demons and all of that. Um, I wasn't going to get into that, but for your research, if you're debating, you might want to check some of that out. Um, so that was his first appearance in the garden as a snake doesn't say Satan or devil, it just says the serpent, and we know what his intention was to, to, to get the woman to disobey. Why? I don't know. I don't know why his, but, but it seems like there's something about him that is just totally evil. Like all he wants to do is freaking kill us and you, if he gets a chance. Alright, but he can't touch you, girl. Alright, so the devil's first appearance is on earth. And, and one more, uh, something about beginning. I just like this verse because it has beginning in it. John 8, 44. Because we're talking about when did he begin to exist. Uh, John 8, 20, 44. Sorry. And then we're going to get into the real hairy verses. What was it? John 8, 44. John 8, 44. I'm having trouble finding my books this morning. If you have it, go ahead and read it. Anybody's welcome to. All right, here, I'll go for you. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do evil things, the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So what does that say about the devil? And beginnings and origins. Yeah. Ever since it started, he was a, a murderer, a liar. He's a father of lies. He's the one that started it. Okay, so we're thinking, we're talking about Satan. His origin was he created a fallen? Was he created an angel and then he turned bad? Did God create him evil already? And this verse could, you know, could give somebody some edge where it says he was evil. He was a murderer from the beginning. What beginning? His beginning. His beginning or the Adam and Eve beginning? No, his beginning. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's the question you're going to have to figure out. Because uh, you, if you do a little research, get into the, the Greek, look at what beginning, where else is that beginning used, stuff like that. Uh, it gets a little deep, but sounds like he's always been evil. But uh, that's the topic we're going to debate. Okay. Uh, why do many theologians consider the devil to be a fallen angel? Okay, why do you think anybody considers the devil to be a fallen angel? Because they can't uh, accept that God created something so evil. Yeah. I have a hard time accepting that. Tell you what, that's tough for me. Um, is there any biblical evidence that he's a fallen angel? find out. Let's find out. All right. Uh, we're going to look at a we're going to look at a type of inter it's it's not as clear as day. If there was as clear as day, there would be no debate. But it's not that clear. All right? So, to be completely confident on one side is tough because it's not that clear. There's there's reasons to believe both sides. Um, so we're going to look at this this is, you know, I don't know if this word Anybody know what typological means? Typical? Typological. <laughs> T-Y-P. I'm going to write that down. Tip. I hope I spare, spell it right. Tip. Uh, typological. All right. I didn't know what it mean, meant either. So, don't be alarmed. 
All right, here it is. A doctrine of theological types, especially one holding that things in Christian belief are prefigured or symbolized by the old things, by things in the Old Testament. All right, so symbols, like prefigured, they you know talk about something that's referring to something in the New Testament going to happen later. Uh, so it's it's. I'll show you an example. Uh, Matthew 16, 23. And then, Irene, if you could look up uh, Isaiah 14, or, or, or 1 to 7. I have a Bible. 1 to 17. Oh, okay, she doesn't have a Bible. Get one. Oh, here you go. Here you go. Isaiah 14, 1. Matthew 16, 23. Matthew 16, 20. Hit us. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Right there. Perfect. All right. So, Jesus tells Peter what? What does he say? Steve? He calls him devil. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Is Peter really Satan? No. No. Are you sure? <laughs> Just checking. No, he's not actually Satan. What was he doing? He was talking through him, either through him to the devil or just symbolizing about the devil at a later time. Um, I'm going to read the definition again. A doctrine has one holding that things in Christian are prefigured or symbolized by things in the Old Te Testament. So, like a symbol, you're 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 an adversary, or um, also talking through him to the one who's really who he's really trying to talk to the one behind the whole thing all right and this is going to get these are the two the verses we're going to read next are the two biggest arguments for what you guys who will be debating will be using and how you need to study them to be ready all right so Isaiah 14 1 to 17 Irene's going to read a few verses for us and then you can just pass your Bible around and have someone Isaiah else read. 14? 14, 1 to 17. Por favor, empezar. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own lands. And the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Where you want me to? Oh, you, whenever you get tired. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, to servants and handmaids. And they shall take captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors and it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give the rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve well you know what hold on really quick I missed it mm -hmm. yeah, on. sorry That's right. 12 it's verse 12 Mm -hmm. You would have read a lot of verses that we didn't quite need. Chapter 12? Uh, no. So chapter, chapter 14, 14 verse, 12? verse 12 through 17. But let me just give you a little um, background. Okay, so Isaiah is talking to the king of Babylon. And I'm just going to read a couple of verses before 12. Uh, verse 3, it says, In that wonderful day when the Lord gives his people rest from sorrow and fear, from slavery and chains, you will taunt the king of Babylon and you will say, the mighty man has been destroyed. Yes, your insolence is ended, for the Lord crushed your wicked power and broke your evil rule. So he's going through this whole thing about it's targeted towards the king of Babylon. And then he gets to verse 12, which Irene's going to pick up all the way to 17. Thank you, Irene. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which this weakens weaken the nations? For thou... I said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the con congregation on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. So that's right there. Okay, verse 12 is the, the most important one, but the others, okay, so for people who are debating for it, verse 12 is your, your hitter. How are you fallen from heaven, O shining star, or in your version, O Lucifer? O Lucifer, 
You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. So it sounds like, so far, Satan cast down to earth. If Satan is this Lucifer we're talking about. And these are some other descriptions. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of God's far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the Most High. Instead, you'll be brought down to the place of the dead. And, and a little bit more keeps going. But the big one is verse 12. So, what's the context of the verse? The context of the verse is we're talking about the king of Babylon. Alright? But, typology, what if Isaiah's talking to or about the king of Babylon but metaphorically speaking about no. Satan at the same time. Whether he is or not is the debate, so we're not going to really talk about that. All right? Heaven, shining star. Why is this verse given credit? Because you look at Luke 10, 18. Luke, chap Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Again, you guys might want to write this down. I am selling my notes if you guys want them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Luke 10, 18. Um, and look what Jesus says. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Just that. Alright. How you are, verse 12 of Isaiah 14, 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. So putting those two together, it sounds like Satan's fallen from heaven. Alright. But, you know, again, there's debate. Alright, so do you think there's a way to argue against this one? What ways would you or could you? Anybody? Hmm. Okay. Guess that side won. <laughs> Alright, so yes, there is a way. Whoops. In, uh, in, where is it? We don't want to reveal our strategy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, where is it? Okay, in the con okay. First of all, context. He's not talking about Satan. He's talking about the king of Babylon. But like I said, typ typologically, could be talking about Satan. Uh, next is actually in history, the Canaanites worshipped a god, the god of. So uh, this what this could be referring to is during that time there was Canaanite gods and. The story, this was, there was a story of the Canaanite god Hillel, his rebellion against the god El, the chief deity of the god Pantheon, and his fall from heaven. Okay, so I know that was a lot of stuff, but pretty much in that time period, they believed in a god who, who rebelled against the other god, and he lost, and he got cast out. So maybe he was, maybe Isaiah knew about that, and he was talking about that god because that's the one he worshipped. That could be an argument. Okay, whether it's right, I don't know. Here's another one. This is the second one that's pretty big. Um, okay, wait, sorry, before we go to the next one, I'll read you another verse. Revelations 12, 8 to 9, just to help the fallen angel part. Re Revelations chapter 12, verse 8 to 9. And, the, and again, in about two weeks, you guys are going to be going over this stuff. So I'm just trying to help. Yeah. 8 to 9, it says, And the dragon lost the battle, and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with his angels cast out. So whether that was before the beginning or whether this is in the future, I'm going to leave that up to you. But it sounds like it's in the future. Um, all right, second verse, let's talk about Ezekiel 28. All right, this is the next big one. So, we learned about Isaiah, that Isaiah says that he was Lucifer, the morning star. Um, in Ezekiel chapter 28, what does it say about the devil? Verses 11 to 19. Uh, Monica, would, would you mind helping us out? Ezekiel 28, 11 to 19. Okay, uh, 
You are the model of perfection, full of wisdom, exquisite in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Was the king of Tyre in Eden? No. That's all I, was gonna say. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, that's right, because some say that the king of Tyre lived in this his 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 like kingdom was like paradise. They had like castles with just lush gardens there. And <laughs> so? I don't know. Full of wisdom, excuse me, beauty. Did somebody have their hand up? Yeah. Okay. No, you, you already explained it. You were in Eden, in the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, red, carnelian, pale, green, all these beautiful things. Uh, all beautifully crafted for you in the finest set of gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. Look at this one, 14. I ordained you and anointed you as the mighty angelic guardian. You had access to the holy mountain of God and walked among the stones of fire. Was the king of Tyre the angelic? In other versions, it says mighty? cherub. Was he mighty? I, I don't know. <laughs> cherub, angelic guardian. So look, this is where you have to anticipate. He's going to be checking you next on the debate. He's going to be saying these things. Was he mighty? You know, and you're, what are you going to say? No. You know? You're going to have a good response back hey good by the way that's impressive all right so verse 14 it says i know as the mighty angelic guardian the cherub do you guys know what a cherub is or a yeah the one that stands before the ones god. stand before god right and they have this the six wings also the ones who guarded eden they wouldn't let adam and eve back there's two angels that guarded the cherub um that's what he's you know he's kind of the metaphor they're using a lot of metaphors here you were blameless in all you were did in the day we created until the day evil was found in you. Sounds like there was a point he was created good and then at a point evil was in him, found in him. Your rich commerce led to violence and I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. Could be heaven. Like any king. Kingdom. Sorry, good. Ended up bad. Right? I expelled you, almighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. Your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and expo exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. If he's talking about Satan right there, that's impressive. I mean, that's crazy. That Satan was created good, and then evil came up in him, and then God cast him out. Um, I mean, if that's the story, that's, that's quite the story there. Um, amazing. The cherub who is before God. Alright? So, again, that's what you guys are going to be debating. Uh, we're just, we're, we're going to finish, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask you a question before we read the next verse. Do angels have free will? No. no. Okay. Proof? Yeah. Okay. Can they sin? No. They can't. What do you guys think? What do you think? Sin can't be in the presence of the Lord. Okay. So, do angels have free will and can they sin? We have a couple no's. Any yeses? Anybody? That means if I go to heaven, I can sin. I can end up sinning. I hope not. Anybody have any alternative? David, say something, bro. Come on, give us something. All right, well, I'm going to read you a verse. I might shake you. <laughs> Revelations chapter 12, verse 4. Revelations 12, 4. And um, let's see, somebody else with a Bible. Steve, you got a Bible over there? Or just your phone? What do you, okay, you got it. Uh, 2 Peter 2, 4. Could you look that one up? And uh, anybody else have a Bible? Okay, Revelations 2, 4. If somebody has it, would you mind reading it? 2, 4. 2, 4. Shoot, Mm -hmm. It's 12-4. Thank you, 12-4, that's what I meant. My printer's messed up, I just, you know, I couldn't, I'm kidding. You're right, 12-4, thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Josiah. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them down to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Right there. Okay, so the dragon, Satan... Dragon at the end. Swept out a third of who? Oh, the stars. 
third of the stars. So in, in, if you keep reading, it's referring to the angels. Swept a third of the angels out. I think it says later. I, I, I just don't remember now. But anyways, you guys get this verse, research it a little. If he swept some of the stars down with them, what does that say? They could be swayed. It's like before I died in the battle, I swept my enemies. No. Before I died, I killed some of them. Okay, so you're saying that he, then that verse is referring to killing. Hey, guys, think about that for next week. Attack. All right, one more. Uh, 2 Peter 2 4. Oh, who had that one? Steve, you got it? For if God did not fear angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and commanded them to change of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Right there is good. Alright, so can angels sin? Josh says no. Can you read that again, Steve? A little louder, por favor. For if God did not spear angels when they sinned. Whoa! What did you just say? Did you when just say they what? Sinned. When they sinned. Holy smoke. Now, when you look at that word, does that really mean sin? Could mean something else. Does anybody have another? <laughs> <laughs> another version. <laughs> All right, so obviously, somehow, angels can sin. And right there it says, and they were cast down, and they're in the gloomy darkness. Waiting. All right. Which which ones? You can look up Genesis six one to four. It could be talking about the ne 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 Nephilim. One. I'm gonna read you one more verse before you roll out. Jude one six. I'll just read it for you, because you're gonna need it. Jude one six, and it says, "And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged." God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. Can angels sin? Yes. Yeah. At least according to the Bible. How does that make sense in my brain? It doesn't. I don't know. But what it sounds like is angels have free will. Is that they are in their, you know, that sounds like God created them with the ability to choose whether they wanted to continually serve Him or not. Um, and who are demons now? According to the Bible, what we read is they're fallen angels, which came down when Satan fell, if that's really the view uh, that we're going to believe. But next week we're going to look at the opposite one. So thank God, though, that we know the end is that Satan loses because Jesus, when he rose, he conquered him, and that's why we're standing here today because he ain't got no, nothing on us. So, uh, you know, as I started studying it, I was a little scared. I was like, man, I hope he doesn't jump on me as I'm reading this or something, you know. But, but I just, I have confidence knowing that I'm, God has, God has got me. He's, he, I am his and no, nothing can, can get me uh, as long as I'm in him. Uh, so, that's it. The devil, the devil, fallen angel, is it possible for angels to sin? Looks like it. Angel, are angels flesh and bones? You guys figure that out. Is, is the devil a fallen angel? Yeah. All right, we got a couple of yays. Next week, we're going to go the opposite. All right, so uh, let's just pray and we're going to roll out. If you want to look back, it's on YouTube. If you want my notes, $5. Uh, no, I'm just All right, well, let's, let's pray. Uh, let's pray.